Okay, so this is one of the worst things I see so many mid to high handicap golfers do to kick off their golf swing. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome back to Get Good At Golf. On this channel, we try to help you get good at golf through Monday to Friday. Guys, if you want bonus content, if you want giveaways, if you want behind the scenes access, make sure you check out our Sunday club for extra content. But today we're talking through just how not to start the golf swing and how you can play much better golf. You see, in golf lessons, in pro-ams, and when we've just played with people who are trying to get better at golf, we see so many people who roll the hands on the takeaway here, or the move away, should I say. We'll get to that a little bit later on in this video if you saw my lesson with David Ledbetter. But if you roll the hands open here, look what that does to that club face. The club face is now pointing to the sky. It's actually wide open. So even if you then produce a really good position at the top of the backswing, come down through your positions lovely, that club face is still going to be wide open. That adds loft, that makes sure that the club face is aiming right. And if I was to hit you one of these, you can see there, guys, that is a big, horrible slice. That's probably the shot that we see most when playing with mid to high handicap golfers. But the problem there, guys, is it's lacking power, it is lacking direction. Very much like my life at the moment. But, I don't know why I said that, but I found it quite funny, actually. He's lost it. But it can be one of the most frustrating elements in the golf swing. If you don't start the golf swing correctly, if you don't have the correct move away, again, guys, we're going to discuss this in just a second, then you're already off to a terrible start. You see, as the hands roll, not only does the club face open and add loft, but you actually move away from your body here. You would never roll inside because you can see how I lose my posture there and my balance so the arms get disconnected and that's what loses power and that's what loses the direction in the swing the opposite version to this and we see this so often is if people pick the club up so again we're getting disconnected here that club face is probably closed at the top and from there that's when people get steep down into it I'll not hit it over there because there's a lovely nature reserve over there. And we don't want to we don't want to disturb the fish and the birds, do we, Chris? We don't. But a really good thing to change this, guys, and Chris is going to throw a drill at you in a few moments' time. But all you want to do is make sure that left arm stays connected to your body, and that dictates the club face on the way back. So you can see that club face is now bang in line with my spine angle here. That's exactly where I want it. So if I were to load up to the top of the backswing and then swing through you can see how that's a much straighter ball flight primarily because i've got that club face in a lovely position on the way back on the move away guys i had a lesson with one of the best coaches in the world a few weeks ago if you've seen it on my main channel then this may not be new to you but if not i'm just going to throw a few things in about exactly what he said about the perfect move away in the golf swing uh, but your tendency would be to sort of do this where this sort yeah. of rolls pretty early right yeah. so we can see that for me the common denominator really with virtually all the top players is where the hands appear to move in and the club head stays out so we can we and you can look at if you look at this line here this yellow line okay, yeah it, we we call this a straightaway because this actually needs to look straight away at this point imagine you're in a clock phase so this is six o'clock here yeah. nine o'clock there yeah. obviously if you're left it'd be three o'clock yeah. but so we're trying to get to nine o'clock that's that's the whole the whole thing where this is now parallel to the, yeah, to the yeah. line of step. You see, right? so that to a lot of people who sort of tend to roll it like you do, they say, "Well, the club face feels way outside." Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it feels closed. Yeah, you see, but in actual fact, if you look at square to the arc, isn't it? Yeah, it's square yeah. the arc, and look, in actual fact, it has gone inside the line, but it hasn't gone rapidly inside the line, <laughs> right? So we can see it's. There we go. And yeah. literally, the, the takeaway is a very short movement. Literally, where the, the top of the club moves maximum about a foot, and the, the head moves about three feet. And obviously, it varies depending mm -hmm. if you've got a driving hand, it's going to be a little bit more. But literally, you know, say a foot, head maybe three yeah. feet, and the butt of the club is, is actually moving slightly inwards there. So it's like a little circle inside a big circle. There's a little circle where the hands follow, a big circle where the club head follows, and the little circle always stays inside the big circle. What happens, and especially you see with, with a lot of club golfers, they whip that thing in behind them. They take the club back and say, that's why I'm not a big fan of the word takeaway, but people use it so often. Yeah. You know, it's actually, you're moving away because you're actually trying to move it away with your core. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, think of your belly button moving the club away. Yeah. And as long as you keep your left arm connected to your chest, that's all the technique you want. 
So some fantastic tips there from one of the world's best coaches, the world renowned Mr. David Ledbetter. I was very lucky to have his time over in Florida. And one of the big keys for me that I took from that and which can really help you guys with the takeaway, sorry, the move away in the golf swing is we used to get told to have the toe of the club pointing up to the sky. So I remember when I was teaching junior classes, I got taught to teach to make sure that if there was a glass table there, the toe of the club would smash that glass table. Now, the only problem with that is you have to then move the hands all the way through to do the same. So you have to be very, very quick with the hands. You have to have a lot of timing and timing isn't our friend in the golf swing. If you rely on timing too much, you can hit a vast array of shots. And we don't want a vast array of shots. We want a shot that is under control and to have a shot that's under control, that club face has to be nice and stable throughout the swing. So in order to do that, Again, I'm going to make sure that I do all the things I mentioned earlier. That left arm stays connected. The club face is nice and square. But I'm going to control that rotation of the club face with the rotation of my body. That's where I want to be at impact. I want a nice square club face with an ascending blow to the ball. That's how I'm going to hit long drives. That's how I'm going to hit more fairways. And it all stems from not taking the club away by rolling the hands or picking the club face up. So what if you're the guy that picks the club face up? I've got my hand in a really weird position there because that's almost where you have to be to pick the club face up. How do you know? So if you don't video your golf swing, how can you be aware that you're that guy? So you can basically tell by the ball flight, and I'm not gonna lie, you can probably tell by some big horrible scuffs on top of your driver. Luckily enough, we've not done that yet on this driver. I'm not gonna do it in this video either, but I'll show you a little bit of an explanation. So. If you're that guy and you pick the club up really steep here, generally your bad shot's going to be steep in and down. And you can even see there, I've done it at low speed not to damage the driver, but you can see the strike location just on the crown of that club. That's definitely, well, first of all, it's not what you want aesthetically, but it's not going to get the desired spin rate. It's not going to get the desired ball speed. And it's certainly not going to hit the fairway. Um, we might have lost that one already. It's a good lob shot. It's not a bad lob shot, you're right. If you want to get a lob shot, you do want to get a little bit steeper, but that's for another day. Guys, let me show you a drill. In fact, let the drill master show you a drill. Are you still going by that? Oh, am I? He's going to show you a drill now on how you can improve your takeaway to hit much better golf shots. So guys, when we talk about drills for this movement, we want to go to a shorter range. So we don't want to be doing drills with your driver straight away. We want to get a basic understanding with something that's a little bit easier to hit. I'm going to go with an A time for this example. You could go down to pitching wedge. You could start with a wedge, any kind of wedge, just to get you getting a contact. And it's a lot easier because the club, the club even, is not traveling as fast. So what we want to do for that takeaway or move away, as uh, Mr. Ledbetter says, is we want to think about what is moving together. So we want your arms and chest to be working together. We don't want to get that first movement coming from rolling. We also don't want it coming from the arms picking the club up. We want those two to be working together. So if you bring the club and put it into your belly button, and then from here, the first movement we want to see is that I turn my chest, my arms go with that, and you'll see that, that the club face is now matching with my spine angle. So instantly there, it is in the correct position. If I now just extend that and put my grip on, from here, I've got a good base now to build that swing, come down, and like James said, as I turn into impact, using my rotation of the body, that is going to square up the club face when we come into impact. It's not coming from the hands. And again, like James mentioned, a lot of times people think it's timing. Are you somebody who plays golf and you come out here one day, you hit everything great, you get a good score, you shoot two or three under your handicap, you come back out two days later, and it's like the red arrows. The golf ball's going everywhere. That's probably because you're relying on a lot of timing. If you get this hands rolling inside on the way back, some days you'll time that up pretty good. The next day you come and that club face is closed, we can't get any kind of strike. But by getting this movement here correct every single time, we can then get into a position where I can be consistent with striking the ball. So we're not just gonna do it without a golf ball, and this is why we go down to an iron, because I want you to start to hit shots like this. So you're gonna take your setup as norm. We're then going to go, right, I feel comfortable there, I'm the right distance from the ball, into the belly button, rotate, extend that there, and then from here, I want you to think, that I've got my takeaway correct, let me just turn to the top and hit that shot. And from there, ball striker. and from there, we are able 
to get a good strike, get that ball starting online, because I know from there I've not had to manipulate the club because I know my takeaway was correct. Once you feel comfortable with that, you can move up gradually through your bag. You could get to a six iron, get to a four iron, and then when you're really confident, you might try that drill with a driver. You'll see people on the PGA Tour, I forget the guy's name, but there was a player who used to do that. That was the start of his backswing. He'd stop there, and then he would make his motion. And that was just simply because his takeaway was costing him shots by getting a little bit too far inside, and it was costing him a lot of money, and in your case, costing you to get your handicap down. So guys, hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully that's a good drill for you to do on the driving range, on the golf course, to help you get good at golf.